Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Bug Bounty series. I do apologize for not uploading the last week. I've been feeling very, very unwell, but I'm better now. And here we go. So welcome back to the series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at iframe injection and more specifically, HTML injection. Now, I thought, why not make a, uh, a sort of like a conjoint video where I cover all of this. And of course, the best way to understand injection, more specifically HTML injection, is to also take a look at iframe injection. All right, so the first question in your mind is what exactly is an iframe? Well, an iframe is an HTML document that is embedded inside another HTML document. All right, now a lot of you guys have requested for this particular video and uh, asked me to explain it and how attackers use it to leverage control over a particular web application that they have exploited. All right, so an iframe attack is when a, a hacker or, a, or an attacker embeds malicious code in your website page that executes various malicious instructions. So for example, uh, it is usually bundled with malware on the web server that then redirects the homepage to another website or usually with all the types of malware that you'll find on WordPress, what happens is they use the iframe integration to essentially execute or run ads on your particular website or to redirect your website. All right. Now, with that being said, this is a very common uh, attack and a very common problem for websites. And it's very important to understand how to perform this attack and why it occurs. All right, so let's take a look at the tools we'll be using. Now, if you've realized, I'm currently running this on my my main workstation. Many of you told me to do so. Uh, I don't know for what reason, but anyway, here we go. So the tools we're going to be using are going to be uh, BWAP. So BWAP is going to be our target vulnerable web application, which you've already realized uh, because that's where I'm currently running it on. Now, the link to BWAP will be in the description. However, if you have trouble w setting it up, uh, which I will make a video on uh, later on, um, uh, installing it manually onto web server, you can get BBox. Now, BBox is a pre-configured um, virtual machine or a pre-configured Linux server that already has a BWAP uh, installed, configured, and ready to go. So I will also have this in the description section. And this is currently running on a virtual on my uh, local network uh, uh, under a virtual machine. So I already have that set up, and you can see the IP is right over here, 192.168.1.105. Uh, so the tools, uh, the other tool we will be using is of course going to be burp and that is going to be our intercepting proxy. The rest I'll be explaining as we move along. All right. So with BWAP, it's really, really very simple. Uh, all you need to do is uh, essentially load up the IP address and we're good to go. All right. So let's start off with uh, iframe injection. So when you start up BWAP, you can select the, the bug that you want to exploit by clicking right over here and going into iframe detection. Sorry, iframe injection. Now, a lot of you uh, will be wondering why I'm not covering HTML injection because that is primarily because I'm going to be covering it all within iframe injection instead of making uh, unique videos for all of these topics. Although if you want me to do so, let me know. All right, let's get started. So we're going to click on iframe injection and click on hack and it's going to take us to the iframe injection page. Now, if we open up the source of the page, which is something you should be always doing to essentially, to essentially analyze uh, what uh, the web application, what, what's going with, with the web application, whether there are any misconfigurations. All right, so, so far, so good. We can see that it is a simple HTML uh, web page uh, with a bit of styling. And right over here, we have the iframe. All right, so the iframe right over here tells us that the source is, uh, or the page that is being displayed within the iframe is the robots.txt file. Now, for this particular case, I ran a Dearbuster on the local web server, or, or, or sorry, on BWAP, and essentially uh, scanned the uh, the local web route. And these are the files and directories that exist. Now, get, this is a vulnerable web application, so you have to understand that. Now, uh, this web application, by default, we already know, has a robots.txt page, which it already confirms to us, and that's exactly what this iframe is doing. Now, if we take close, uh, we take closer look to the uh, to the URL. You can see that we have the PHP file here, which is iframei.php, and we then have the param URL right over here. Now, this parameter that is again called the param URL allows us to specify any particular directory in the local web route. What what does this mean? Well, for example. If we say, uh, if I wanted to load up any other directory in the, in the local web route, I would simply uh, exchange that uh, that robots.txt for that particular directory. And of course, we have the other parameters here that specify um, the height and width of the particular iframe you're going to be working with. So for example, I can say right over here, I can change this to 300, 
but you 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 get the idea in in which case i will be explaining all of this in a second so the param url right here is is very very important and allows us to specify any particular file on the local web root so for example uh, with uh, BWAP, we have a file here called 666 uh, and essentially is like a flag uh, that you're supposed to find when fuzzing the web application. So, for example, if I open up 666, you can see that it's going to tell us right over here. Hi, little B, uh, how are you today? Try to detect this evil 666 page. Uh, and of course, we can scroll right over here through fuzzing and have fun. So that is a simple example of of how you can sort of use the parameter L over here. But we haven't talked about iframe, uh, iframes and more particularly uh, HTML injection. All right, so uh, I've just performed a simple brute force. So for example, if I, oh, I can essentially specify right over here, uh, I can say uh, BWAP images. So for example, I can change that right over here to the images directory and uh, let's see if that brings it up for us. So you can see it does work. now. If I'm to change it right over here within the param URL, I would specify it uh, as is, all right? So for example, uh, I would say if, uh, right over here, if we just take a look at the directory uh, once, once more, we can see it, 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 it is under BWAP. So I'm gonna say B, uh, we're gonna specify BWAP right over here. And that is under images. So if I hit enter, you can see it's gonna display the directory for us with, uh, within the iframe. So this is very, very useful when you want to perform a bit of execution and discover what directories and uh, what directories are on a particular web server and you can uh, execute them and view them. Now, of course, many of you will be wondering, well, how can we leverage this further? So for example, if I wanted to view a, a directory outside the web root, would that be possible? Well, yes, that would be possible if the web application is in, incorrectly configured. And uh, what I mean by this is, for example, uh, if you've ever set up a web server before, you know they are users and groups. And a uh, good standard or uh, the default standard is to essentially have the local web server uh, which could be running Apache, whatever the case, uh, should be uh, using the user and the group www root uh, or sorry, sorry www data. Sorry, apologies for that. And there should be a distinction between the root user and uh, the www data. So essentially separating all the various applications. Uh, for, so for example, the web directory or the Apache directory is going to be only uh, is only going to be allowed to be accessed by that particular user, and that user cannot access any part other particular file on the system. So if this uh, if this web application was incorrectly uh, configured, then that means that we could uh, essentially view any files on the target web server. And how would we do that? So for example, I have Burp Suite set up here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just very very simply I'm just going to re reload this page. I'm going to get rid of that and it's going to reload it for us. I'll enable the burp proxy through foxy proxy right over here. And I will uh, also turn on intercept and I will reload this right over here just to understand what's going on here for a second. So uh, I'll open up burp suite and you can see right over here that we get the uh, the proper get request here, which again is also about uh, the HTML uh, injection, which is also what, what we'll be taking a look at right now. So Sorry, that was a mouthful. So we can uh, we can actually edit the get request here. And if I was to essentially put in uh, etsy password, this could be a file that you want to view because it'll, it'll essentially uh, give you an idea of what users are on the system. This web application has been configured correctly, which means if I hit forward, it should tell us here, right over here. It shouldn't give us anything, which is, is very, very good, which means that uh, we are restricted to the web server and the web root directory. We cannot view any other files on that particular web server. All right, that being said, I'm just going to disable intercept here and you can see right over here uh, that Etsy password is not found, which is great. It means that we are only restricted to the web server or the web root directory. All right, so I'm going to reload this one more time and we'll go back to the iframe injection. All right, so now that we have uh, we've essentially established that we can uh, that we are limited to the web root. Now let's talk about injection, more specifically HTML injection. So if we take a look at the request that is being sent, the get request that is being sent. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm just going to uh, make sure intercept is set to on. Uh, we have uh, web suite right over here. So I'm going to reload that and we'll go back into web suite. All right, so within Burp Suite, you can see something very, very interesting. You can see that we have the parameter URL, which specifies the file. Uh, however, we have not realized that it isn't imp uh, important because we are only restricted to the web root. So let's talk about HTML injection. So you can see right here that the tag isn't closed, which means if we close it, we should be able to execute code. Now, this is because this get request has been uh, formatted incorrectly and the web application in this case is vulnerable to an HTML injection attack. You might be saying, well, how do we how do we proceed from here? So the first thing we want to do is we want to close the iframe because it hasn't been closed yet. So we can close the iframe right over here. So I can say iframe 
And once we close it, we can execute any HTML code after this particular tag right here. So for example, I could say H1, uh, I could say Alexis is cool. I know that is a bit presumptuous of me, but anyway, uh, H1 will close that tag right over here. And if we forward this, what should happen is we should be able to execute that HTML code, which means you can uh, potentially exploit a, a ton of, you can essentially put in malicious code. You get the idea. I'm not going to get into all that you can do with HTML injection. My goal is to explain how it works. So for example, if I hit forward, you'll see that right over here it tells us Alexis. Now the reason it's giving us the width again is because we have to close that particular uh, we have to close that particular tag there. However, you can see that we can execute code. All right. So uh, now, now the, the interesting to, to thing to take into consideration here is if we just forward disable intercept here and let's just r uh, refresh that one more time. And uh, I will also enable intercept here so we can refresh it and understand what was going on. So I can essentially explain it one more time. So what I said here is if once we close this tag right over here, and of course we know that it use, is using an iframe and we close the iframe tag. After this, it means now we can execute whatever we would we, we could have executed after you know an iframe. So you can execute any HTML code. So again, I can put in a paragraph here and I can type whatever I want. I can put in a, an H2, I can put in whatever I want. I can also insert JavaScript if I want. But of course, that is limited to the functionality of the of the particular web server you're running on and the particular stack that you're using. All right. Now, that is how to perform HTML uh, iframe injection in HTML injection. And this video is sort of out there to explain how you can go about doing this. Now, of course, we've talked about the param URL and how you can essentially view all the files on a particular web server. And of course, if the web application is incorrectly configured, that means you can view all the files on that particular web server uh, that, that also go beyond the, uh, the, the web root directory. That being said, this is a very, very basic example. And uh, the goal of this video was to explain how it works. Now that we understand how it works, we can now move on to command injection and all that good stuff. All right. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.